It's time to make some delicious crispy pork belly chunks. Let's travel to a small mom and pop restaurant in the lovely Jiali district on the southwest coast of Tainan, Taiwan. The pork belly is the cut from the underside of the pig. It has nothing to do with its stomach. In fact, this cut, once smoked and cured, is what bacon is made of. Bacon is amazingly great, so pork belly is even better because the meat is prepared thick and juicy. It is so yummy. First, wash the prime cuts well and hang to dry. There are stamp marks on the inner layer of skin indicating where the meat originated. These are easily removed and is not harmful if eaten. The tough skin and fat layer is also tenderized with punctures, for we don't want to cut it away because this part is what makes smoking and frying pork bellies so special. The layer seals in the juices and while cooking will bubble up, trapping in the flavors, causing the skin to have its own distinct texture and flavor. In fact, pork rinds are made from this part. Each side is scored and sectioned. The raw meat is cut almost all the way through. The marinade is a mixture of sweet and spicy sauces such as soy, oyster, chili, and the spices include garlic, salt, pepper, ginger, cinnamon, and green spices. Marinating the raw meat for a few hours tenderizes the cutlet, breaking down the connecting proteins that can make it too chewy. Watching this chef spread this special sauce reminds me of an artist painting a masterpiece. The canvas being the pork, soon to tantalize your tongue. Now for the hanging hooks. Piercing the meat to dangle while it cooks allows gravity to drain any excess fat, water, or blood. They are evenly placed around the cylinder oven, where a charcoal mini stove emanates heat and fire from the bottom. This will allow the pork to be smoked and heat cooked at the same time. The excessive temperature in the sealed metal container cooks the pork slowly as the sparks jump up and kiss the layer of rind skin. Fat and water is collected on the bottom. It actually looks good. I wonder what they do with it. Perhaps it's used in future marinades or as a shortening. Basting is continued with oil, thus rehydrating the meat throughout the process, allowing tiny blisters containing liquid and gas to slowly form. Pork bellies are a popular food in Chinese, Filipino, Hispanic, Korean, Nordic, and Thai cultures. It hasn't caught on yet in the U.S. or Europe, but with more restaurants from those countries, it will soon convert the foodies there too. No taste can compare to a well-prepared pork belly. It's interesting how expertly these hooks and metal tongs are used throughout. This would be a great job for Edward Scissorhands or Captain Hook. When the pork is evenly cooked through and through, it is placed in the broiler oven. Here, we see the oil and water rising up from underneath like a volcano erupting with meaty goodness. The forming of these little bubbles on the skin ensures it will have a crispy texture that holds in the luscious juiciness. Wow, look how easily the finished meat is cut. The skin has that wonderful sturdy texture while the pork underneath jiggles with tenderness. I can almost taste the crispy outside and juicy meat beneath. Each chunk gets sectioned off again and cooked to perfection. On to the chopping block, where each portion is cut up into mouth-watering niblets, then stacked in a container. The meat alone makes a great munchy food costing 230 Taiwan dollars, or about $7 US. It can be eaten with chopsticks and dipped into tangy or spicy sauces. Now we will make a pork banh mi, which is like a Subway sandwich or the Taiwanese version of a BLT a belly-loving treat. First, chop the cutlet fully into thin meat strips. A de-seeded cucumber with skin is a must. Fresh bread is filled with greens of parsley, onion carrot slaw, chili peppers, then, to top it off, the long cucumber. All that's needed is a little oil, and this makes the ultimate sandwich. This hero of a pork sandwich costs 80 Taiwan, or $2.25 US. Porked out, 
to perfection. Here we have a meat lover's lunch, pork with sauce, or a pork-filled sandwich. It's so awesome to order both and share together with a friend. Let's take a trip to Taichung, Taiwan on the west coast. It's right in the middle of the country so we can sink our teeth into a giant scallion pancake. The dish seems like a stuffed green onion pizza or a vegan calzone, but since it's not Italian and made in a pan, we'll call it a pancake. The pre-made dough is ready to be infused with fresh plucked scallions. This root is sometimes called a green onion. They are different from spring onions, which have a giant bulging bulb at the end. Scallions are slim. Their thickness is uniform throughout. And their flavor is not as harsh as onions. So they won't make you tear up as you cut them. Remove the frilly ends, whose purpose is to suck the nutrients out of the soil. The strongest flavor is in the white part but the entire stem can be eaten. This restaurant has a scallion slicer, which works like a paper shredder, but you can eat what comes out. It cuts the stems into tiny pieces, about a third of a centimeter thick. The dough, using a high-protein flour and less sugar, is actually more like a pizza or pita dough. It is stretchy and can be rolled, and also contains a little yeast to make it thick as it rises. It is sectioned off, weighed, and bagged as the ingredients meld together before rolling. After a few hours, the giant pancake is ready to be made. Adding more flour while kneading makes the dough less stretchy, thus easier to roll into a giant flat rectangle. Excess flour is pushed aside and olive oil is added to the top to make it smooth and absorb all the spices. The oil also allows pepper and ground spice mix to settle in. The scallions have salt, sugar, and oil added, and then are combined by flipping and shaking. A lot of scallions are added on the top, except for the perimeter, creating a layer of crunchy green succulent veggies about a centimeter thick. They are then neatly folded, and another layer of oil is added to that surface. The previous step is then repeated and the dough is folded again, then pinched together to hold in the ingredients. The dough infused with the stuffing is set aside so it absorbs all the saporous juices. It is pressure rolled again until it is one centimeter thick. Now it is ready for frying. The pan is prepared with a squirt of olive oil and the concoction is gently laid on the skillet surface. A few squirts of water are added to keep it moist. Crunchy sesame seeds cover the top surface as the heat browns the other side. More olive oil, then with a wooden spatula chopstick skill, it is carried off, flipped in the air, landing softly to brown the top side. Add a bit of water and cover. That was one big pancake, but now this chef will make a giant one. Again, the dough has been rolled out, but this time to half its thickness. After the scallions are placed on top, it is folded in, kind of like a humongous burrito. Cheddar cheese is layered along the fold. Any other ingredient of your choosing can be added. Now it's time to check out our sizzling pancake. With that same double spatula skill, the chef lifts it off the skillet. I hope he flips it again because that looked so cool. And there he goes. It is hot, crispy, soft, and ready to be cut. He slices it into triangles just like a thick pizza and readies them for takeout. How I would love to sink my teeth into one right now. These cost 40 Taiwan dollars or $1.25 US. Now back to that long cheesy rolled scallion dough. It gets folded neatly again and then equally cut into rectangular sections. Layered in threes, the chef takes them to the well-greased skillet and spreads them out to be fried. Amazing how they all fit perfectly. Again, a spray of water to keep them moist and chewy. I like pizza, but this vegan healthy scallion and sesame slice looks heavenly. Flaky dough with layer upon layer of softened delicious scallions and crunchy seeds on top to add texture and taste. No cheese needed here. It's perfect as is. The cheesy burrito-like rectangles are ready to be flipped 
and sprayed on the other side. Within a few minutes, they are ready too. And just look at this amazing take on the perfect grilled onion and cheese sandwich. All ingredients complement each other wonderfully. Another square pizza comes out of the fryer, and we want to see it flipped and chopped into triangles again. My question is, the pan was round, and to make equal-sized triangles, it needs to be round. But somehow, they do it with a square. This food preparation has been geometrically fascinating. And it's amazing how the thickness of the pizza pancake grew during the process. It's mesmerizing. Each of these is a big meal in itself. Probably no need to dip it into anything. Hmm, what kind of condiment sauce would go perfect with it? I would have to taste it first, but I'm thinking sour cream. Or a mix with a tangy barbecue sauce. But it is most likely perfect just the way it is. What is great about this is that the triangles are completely vegan and the other pretty much vegetarian. No animals were harmed in the making of this video. Scallions are the most versatile of the Allium genus. They are slightly spicy, but not as much as onion bulbs or garlic, and more flavorful than leeks. When fried into bread, they become tender as the dough absorbs so much of the flavors. And they pair well with so many spices. This is one dish I now have to try at home. Thank you for watching this food video. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel to get notified about when our next video is posted. Bon appétit!